So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Hi, and welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, December the 12th. I'm Mark Syme, the minister here at Northfield. We will have a regular service with several songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and hopefully I will have a message that will be beneficial and enlightening to each one of us. So if you have your songbooks, Songs of Faith and Praise, Please turn them to number 435. 435. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise. And give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voices raise, your voices raise. Give glory and honor and power unto him. Jesus, the name of all Number 67. Sixty-seven. Beautiful song. <clears throat> for the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all do thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above Offering upon every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. And before we observe the Lord's Supper, let's turn to number 366. 366. <clears throat> By Christ redeemed and Christ restored. We keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord. 
until he come. His body given in our stead, his seen in this memorial bread. And as we drink, we see the blood until he come. And thus that dark betrayal night with the last advent we unite. By one bright chain of loving right until he come. We know that uh, we are instructed to uh, gather together on the Lord's Day, and there are several reasons why. One of the paramount reasons we are to gather together is to observe the death, the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus uh, instituted the Lord's Supper the night before he was betrayed in uh, what we have come to familiarly call the Last Supper with his disciples. And he's gathered around. He gave thanks for uh, that symbol of his body and the symbol of his blood. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, did exactly the same thing uh, for the Corinthian church and for us as he explained uh, the importance of uh, observing the Lord's Supper so that we can etch in our memories uh, uh, what happened that uh, fateful day uh, on Calvary. We uh, just can't even fathom uh, what Jesus went through, uh, leaving the right hand of his Father in heaven to come down in the form of a human being and then to die a most horrible and, and terrible death. And so as we gather about the table, as we are instructed to do on the first day of the week, let's uh, just pause and, and give thanks for uh, what uh, happened uh, on our behalf. Uh, let's give thank for the thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to uh, have his body uh, just uh, tortured on the cross. And uh, let's always remember that he did that uh, for each of us. He made that sacrifice so that sacrifices would not have to be made any more of that nature because he made the one and perfect sacrifice. Bless us, bless us as we partake of this bread. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. In the same way, on that night, uh, Jesus took the cup, and after he had blessed it, he gave thanks. And we are to do the same thing. Uh, the thanks that we give for uh, the cup, which uh, to us symbolizes uh, the blood that Jesus shed, that uh, blood that uh, 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 flowed from his body as his life slowly ebbed away, the blood that becomes so important to each one of us as it is the blood that washes away our sins. Let's give thanks. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're thankful beyond understanding for the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And we're mindful at this time when we partake of this fruit of the vine of the blood that he shed, the innocent blood, that one sacrifice that only could be made by the Son of God. Bless us as we partake. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
And for the sake of convenience at this time, we think about giving back to the Lord. Uh, that is also uh, instituted in our New Testaments in Second Corinthians, uh, and it talks about laying by and laying by in store. And so, uh, let's uh, give as we have proposed to give. Let's give as we have planned to give. Uh, let's give with a grateful heart. Let's give with cheerfulness. Uh, let's pray for the giving part of our service. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that we have the ability to give. Moreover, we're grateful that we have the desire to give back to you uh, what uh, is yours anyway. Help those that are in charge of these monies to be just stewards, that these monies will be utilized in such a way that your word will be furthered and that uh, people will be helped in some way. Uh, bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song we will sing uh, before the lesson is number 172. <clears throat> 172. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to love the Lord. Thank you for singing along with us. And uh, I hope that uh, you're ready for a lesson. And I hope that uh, I can deliver it in such a way that it'll be beneficial uh, to each one of us. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that the title of the lesson tonight will simply be Jesus gave thanks. We are kind of in the middle of two of uh, the most popular seasons in uh, this country. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated Thanksgiving. And uh, in just a couple of weeks, uh, we are going to celebrate uh, what we call Christmas or the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, it is a time, I think, between Thanksgiving and Christmas that uh, we should give pause to uh, think of the things that we are thankful for in our lives. Uh, these are two of the, the seasons that should bring out the best in people. It's so easy, I think, to take for granted the multitude of blessings that we have. And it's also easy to think that we've accumulated these blessings by our own power or by our own ingenuity. That being said, Jesus doesn't want us to sit on our hands and think that uh, God will just rain all these things down on us. We are to labor we are to work so that we can uh, make the money that it takes to support a family, to make the money that it takes to support a church. However, we need to do this that the realization that uh, our God is the source of all blessings. And so we need to learn from Jesus himself. Because what I'm going to do this evening is... Uh, 
kind of set apart some of the times where Jesus paused and gave thanks. He offered thanks. He expressed thanks. It wasn't unusual for Jesus to give thanks before uh, uh, a meal. We have that wonderful um, story in John, the sixth chapter, uh, about uh, the feeding of the 5,000, where a young lad with five loaves and two fishes brought them to Jesus. The text there says, Jesus took the loaves and having given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated. He gave thanks. He gave thanks for the meal. Sometimes we just uh, take things for granted, even things like a meal, that uh, the meal just kind of appeared to itself out of nowhere, that uh, we haven't been blessed in the society that we live in. I'm reminded of a, a movie. Uh, I think it came out in the 50s or 60s, starring Jimmy Stewart as a farmer. And uh, Jimmy Stewart had five sons and a daughter. And it, the, the story was set at about the time of the Civil War. And he was trying to keep his family together. He was trying his best not to take sides. He was trying to just kind of mind his own business and tend his farm. Stewart's wife had died not too long before and she was a devout Christian. And on her deathbed, she uh, said to her husband, make sure that you raise our children in a Christian environment. And Stuart did his best, even though he was not necessarily a believer or a Christian. And so when they sat down for a meal, he knew that his wife would be happy if they had a prayer before the meal. But Stuart took just a little different tack of what the prayer was all about. I remember it like yesterday. I actually viewed it. I wrote it down so that I could give it to you word for word. Uh, he said, Lord, we cleaned this land. We plowed it, sowed it, and then harvested it. We cook the harvest. It wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be eating if we hadn't done it all by ourselves. We worked dog bone hard for every crumb and morsel. But we thank you just the same for the fruit we're about to eat. Amen. <laughs> what kind of prayer does that sound like? It sounds like one in which the prayer of this prayer didn't believe that all good things come from the Lord. And you know what? Jesus never viewed it that way. When he prayed for the loaves and the fishes, it says he took the loaves and haven't given thanks. He didn't say, hey, we're so fortunate that this young boy had five loaves and two fishes. And you know, it's only because he had these five loaves and two fishes that 5,000 people are going to be able to eat. It would almost be ridiculous, as ridiculous as Jimmy Stewart's prayer in the movie Shenandoah. And so in uh, this country where most of us have an abundance, uh, not just during holiday seasons, but uh, when we take even food for granted. Uh, it's very, very easy for us to do that. Let's remember the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. He said this, For everything created by God is good, 
and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude, for it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. It's sanctified through God's word and through prayer, through the giving of thanks. In Matthew chapter 11 and Luke chapter 10, we find Jesus condemning those who have accepted his message, but did not, let me see if I can get the wording of this right, but did not while others who did not appear to be so righteous received his word. Jesus offered thanks that God's message would be received to those who want to understand it. Here's the way he said it. At that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, and if you, you have revealed them to the infants. That's found in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, and Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Now, by the way, before we read that and say, whoa, 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 where's Jesus going with that? Before we think that God does not want those who are wise and intelligent to have his word, in this context, the wise and the intelligent are those who do not believe they need any more information than they have already. They let their wisdom get in the way of being thankful. God is looking for those that are willing to be taught. We don't learn through osmosis. It just doesn't seep into us. The only way that we can learn more about the Word of God is by reading the Word of God. The only way that we can become close to God's Word is by taking it and meditating on it day and night, as the psalmist says in the first psalm. And so that's what the Lord wants us to do. He's looking for those who are willing to be taught. As a lifelong teacher, I wanted so badly for my students to want to be taught. And it was part of my job. It wasn't just to disseminate information, but it was to explain the importance of learning things. It was the importance of natural curiosity about gathering information in and learning more. And so the Lord gives his word to us and he, I believe, hopes with every thread of him that we have a heart to receive that word. And when we think about it, where would we be without the word of God? Where would we be? In Jeremiah chapter uh, 10, verse 23, the prophet Jeremiah says, I know, O Lord, that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his own steps. Jeremiah says that it's through your wisdom, Lord, that we can walk the way we're supposed to walk. And when Jesus was talking to his disciples and he kind of led on, are, are you guys going to leave me? You know, uh, are, are you guys going to turn away like many people have turned away? And in John chapter 6 and verse 68, Peter, in one of his more insightful moments, said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Let's always be thankful for the word of God in which is found life itself. 
Here's one that maybe we don't think about. Jesus actually thanked God that he heard his prayer. <laughs> you get that? He actually thanked God that God heard the prayer that he offered. When Jesus went to the grave of his friend Lazarus in John chapter 11, verses 41 and 42, and remember Lazarus had been dead a couple of days already, he prayed. Let's examine that prayer. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But because of the people standing around, I said it, so they may believe that you sent me. You see, that was part of it. Part of it was that he wanted people to know that he was not only the son of man, but he was the son of God. And God literally sent Jesus to the earth. He sent him to the earth. And we know the end. We just observe the Lord's Supper and we know what Jesus went through. But he did that because Jesus was sent to the earth by God. How often do we thank God huh, that he hears us? Shouldn't we make that a part of our prayer? Dear Lord, I thank you that you hear me. Jesus said that publicly so that people would believe. And we ought to be willing to let people around us know where we stand. That we are grateful that God hears us. And it may cause others to believe. Remember the great promise John made when he wrote in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Part of our prayer ought to encompass the fact that we just are in wonderment that our God there on high, the, the great and wonderful God, actually hears us. A moment ago, we observed the Lord's Supper. And in the Lord's Supper, Jesus specifically gave thanks. He gave thanks for the food items that were involved in the Lord's Supper. Luke records in Luke chapter 22 and verse 19, and when he, that's Jesus, had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them. He knew what the bread was. He knew what it was for, but he made sure that he gave thanks to his God for that bread. Now, Matthew says that Jesus blessed the bread, but that word means offering thanks for. And then when it came to the fruit of the vine, Matthew records this in Matthew 26, 27. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. You know, the Lord's Supper is such an important part of our worship service because we remember the death of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And each part of it, the bread, the body, the fruit of the vine, the blood, each of those is so vitally important that each time that we observe the Lord's Supper, we should give thanks. That should be a, that should be a, a, a part that, uh, is, is never left out at the table. The spokesman who stresses the death of Christ 
so much that he, that maybe he fails to do what Jesus did and give thanks for the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine. I think he sells the Lord's Supper just a little bit short. Yes, we gather around the table to remember Christ's death, but we need to offer thanks for those items that are there that God has provided to enable us to remember the Lord's death. You know, this season of, of thanks and this season of giving uh, shouldn't just be, a, yeah, I guess, a, a one-time part of the year. I think that we should think about Thanksgiving all during the year. You know, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, uh, Paul told us to, to give thanks it's by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Now, does God already know what our requests are? Of course he knows. He knows. He's God. But he wants us to make that effort. He wants us to make the effort to make sure that we give thanks. That we're thankful. Thankfulness should literally permeate our lives. Think of the blessings that happen each time in this lesson when Jesus gave thanks. We ought to be uh, just as thankful for each of the items that Jesus gave thanks for. And you know what? I, I just cherry picked a few of them. There are many, many more. But what we find in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28 is because of God, we live and we exist. And so the message I hope that rests with you this evening is that Jesus constantly gave thanks to God the Father, whether it was for the food, whether it was for the message, whether it was for the word of God, whether it was because he knew that God heard his prayers and he offered thanks because God the Father heard his prayers. And even for the offering of prayer for the food items at the Lord's Supper, let's remember all these uh, places where Jesus gave thanks and maybe maybe for homework uh, you can go through your Bibles and find other things that Jesus gave thanks for there are many many more I pray that this lesson uh, has touched you I pray that uh, it gave you something to think about to, to chew on and to uh, digest you'll look at some of the scriptures and um, and uh, uh, take the message to heart. I pray that each of you is a believer in the Lord. Uh, the Lord loves his believers to give thanks. Uh, I, am, I am convinced that uh, the Lord knows who his people are, and these are the ones that he is attentive to. If you haven't taken Jesus into your life by confessing Jesus as the Son of God, of repenting of your former life and by being baptized for the remission of your sins, we finish this lesson with this invitation. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, I know that uh, you can't do it through the, the YouTube, but you can certainly get in touch with any one of us and we will be, be there in a heartbeat. Uh, I pray that uh, each of you will uh, take this uh, lesson and uh, ingrain it within you. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your message through your word that you uh, just uh, constantly uh, let us know about <clears throat> through 
going through your word and meditating on it. Help us to be thankful for the word. Help us to be thankful for all that we have because you are our great and good God. Uh, we're so grateful for the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And we're so grateful that uh, you hear our prayers and we are thankful for all of those things. Help us to not think that, you know, we cleared the land and we plowed it and we sowed it and we reaped it and we worked so hard, but we're going to give you thanks anyway. Help us to understand that all of those things came from you. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in our lives and help us to be the thankful people that we ought to be. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Please won't you